Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to compare an arterial ulcer versus a venous ulcer. And I'm going to hit on those main concepts you need to know for exams about these types of ulcers. So let's get started. When you're studying arterial and venous ulcers, you want to be able to identify where these ulcers tend to be located and how they appear because that's what exams love to ask you about. So first let's talk about arterial ulcers. With arterial ulcers, there's an issue with the peripheral arteries being able to supply the extremities. And the signs and symptoms of an arterial ulcer tends to be found in that lower extremity below the kneecap. And we have an issue with blood flow, so that rich oxygenated blood being able to get to those extremities, perfuse it, and give those extremities the oxygen it needs. And that blood flow is being blocked. So that's how our signs and symptoms are going to look. Something that would be related to ischemia. So arterial ulcers tend to be located on the ends of the toes, the top of the feet, so the dorsum of the feet, and the lateral malleolus region, so the lateral ankle region, which is the outside part of your ankle. And how these ulcers appear, they tend to have very little drainage and very little tissue granulation where you have healing of new tissue. And that's because there's compromised blood flow going to that ulcer in that extremity. So it can't really drain and it can't really heal. So they tend to be pale and very light pink, or they can even be in severe cases necrotic or black. And how they look, they tend to be very deep and they have this punched out appearance where it literally looks like someone just took like maybe their thumb and just punched out that area, which gives it this noticeable wound edge and margin that gives it a round appearance. And here's an example of an arterial ulcer. Notice it's located on that lateral malleolus ankle area. It literally looks like someone maybe took their thumb and just punched out that area. It's nice and round. And the wound bed is pale, doesn't have a lot of drainage. And the skin surrounding it is really dry and scaly. Now let's compare that to a venous ulcer, also called a venous stasis ulcer. With venous ulcers, you have an issue with the venous system. So those veins are either damaged or the valves of the veins are overstretched and they can't help drain the blood back to the heart. So you get blood pooling being stagnant typically in those lower extremities. And this is going to cause problems because you're gonna get a lot of swelling. So they tend to be located on the medial parts of the lower legs below the knees and the medial malleolus region. So the inside of that ankle region compared to arterial that was on the lateral, this is the medial. And they tend to appear swollen. The skin will be tight, you'll have a lot of edema and there will be drainage and granulation present. And the reason is because we actually have blood flow going to these wounds. We don't have an issue with it being perfused. We just have an issue with the veins being able to take the blood flow back. So that's why compression is really helpful with these venous wounds, like an Una boot will help compress that area and get the blood to return and help with healing because they have zinc oxide in them. Now the base of the wound will be deep pink and red because again, we have the granulation present because we don't have a perfusion, perfusion issue. And the edges of the wound, they will not be nice and round. They're gonna be irregular and the depth of the wound tends to be shallow. And here is an example of a venous stasis ulcer. You can tell by where it's located, that medial part of the leg, almost to the lateral malleolus area. It's definitely uneven. There's a lot of swelling. Look at how tight that skin is. They also have that brown pigmentation of the skin, which is very common with venous stasis ulcers. The wound edges are irregular and look at the base of the wound. It's a nice deep red. Okay, so that wraps up this review over arterial ulcers versus venous ulcers.